Good morning or afternoon maybe for you seekers. Um, this is our fourth installment of a Superstar Read Aloud. So if you haven't listened to the first three videos yet, you probably want to stop here and go back and listen to any of the videos you haven't read so you know where we are in the story. So to recap, the last time we did a Read Aloud, we finished off with Lester getting his brand new pair of Superstar shoes. And he was so excited about those shoes and all the great things they were gonna let him do. And if you remember, whenever he walked, it left the word Superstar in the dirt or the sand, wherever he walked. And so we are picking up with the chapter titled Footprints. By the time we get home, it's dark, but I don't care. I jump out of the car and ran, run straight to the flower garden. Left foot, super, right foot, star. Left foot, super, right foot, star. I look behind me, but it's too dark to tell if it's working. Mom, I can't see anything out here. A minute later, Mom comes outside and shines a flashlight on the ground behind me. The words are written in the dirt, super, star, super, star. Mom, they work great. With the flashlight, I kneel down and inspect the letters more closely. Since the words are carved into the shoes, when I take a step, the dirt gets pushed up into the bottom of the soles to form the letters. So the words actually look like they're coming up out of the ground. I run over to mom and give her a hug. Thank you so much. Mom hugs me back. Lester, I was thinking, do you wanna sit out here and watch the sky with me for a bit? Except for the Persed meteor shower every August, we never sit outside and watch the stars, especially when it's cold like it is tonight. I run inside the house and grab the outside blanket from the hall closet, and Mom and I go out to the middle of the yard where we always watch the superstars. Do you remember when you called them superstars, Lester? Sort of, oh, excuse me, let me back that up. I skipped a word. It reads, do you remember when you started calling them superstars, Lester? Sort of. Actually, I remember the exact moment, but if I say that, she won't tell me the whole story. Well, you had just turned four. I stare up into the starry blackness. That was the year your dad gave you that Superman suit. And everything you did was Superman. You watched the cartoons and played together and pretended to save your other toys. He used to fly you all over that little yard we had down there, Mom laughs. And when he wasn't flying you around, you were flying your little Superman around. And that year, when we went to watch the meteor shower, I wore my Superman suit. And we had those chairs that lay back so we didn't have to lay on the ground. I don't know what happened to those, Mom says. They'd be way more comfortable than lying on this blanket like we do now. Mom, back to the story. Well, back then, you always watched the superstars on your dad's lap. He pulled you up so your cheeks were touching and you'd be looking right where he was looking, right at the very same piece of sky. But I didn't sit with him for long, did I? As soon as that first meteor shot across the sky, Lester, you'd jump up and start running circles around us yelling, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a superstar. And we've called them superstars ever since. Mom. Yeah? You're looking at me. I know, but you can't look at me. You have to keep your eyes on the sky. If you don't and there's a superstar, you'll miss it. I doubt we'll see one tonight. Superstars are pretty rare when there's not a meteor shower. Have you ever seen one? Just once. It was the night your dad and I graduated from college. We were taking one last walk across campus, and right when we were passing the clock tower, we both stopped and looked up, and there it was. Was it really big and really bright? No, it was a little dim, and it didn't stay in the sky for long, but we both saw it. I wish there would be one right now. Mom grabs a hold of my hand, even though we didn't see one. Do you remember what your dad always said, Lester? How the moment has to be just right. Mom and I are out here looking at the sky for the first time in months. She told me the superstar story. I just got my new superstar shoes with the triple reinforced toe box that are gonna help me make the best kick of my whole entire life tomorrow. I know that none of that has anything to do with bits of space dust flying into the Earth's atmosphere, but this moment sure does feel like the just right moment. We wait, and we wait, and we wait. And finally, when we're both shivering, Mom says we have to go inside. I watch the sky all the way to the door, but there aren't any. Tonight, the only superstars are the ones on my feet. 
pages are stuck. Sorry, guys. All right, one more chapter for today, and this one is titled Superstars. I'm not even in my feet for five seconds before Michael Z grabs my foot and lifts it up in the air. You got superstars? He rubs his finger over the bottom of my shoe. You know about them? No way! Connor leans down and grabs my other foot. I have to hold on to my desk so I don't fall off of my chair. That's a pretty funny visual. These just came out yesterday. That's when I got them. More and more kids crowd around my desk until it seems like the whole class is here. Kids are grabbing at my feet and running their fingers over the words carved in the bottoms. Ricky, come here! Connor yells across the room. When Ricky doesn't come, Connor grabs my arm and pulls me out of my chair through the crowd of kids over to Ricky's desk. When we get there, he lifts my foot up and holds it right in front of Ricky's face. Feel the bottom. It's just like they showed on TV. Ricky knocks my foot out of Connor's hand. I don't care about his stupid shoes. My foot bangs against the edge of Ricky's desk, which probably would hurt if the whole inside of my shoe didn't feel like it was covered in pillows. Whatever, Connor says and walks away. I leave too. The last place I want to be is over here next to Ricky, especially when Mrs. Raines isn't in the room. Nice shoes, Abby says when I walk by her desk. They'd be perfect for your superhero chic design. Abby's holding a picture of a baby. Even though he's dressed up like a pumpkin, I recognize him right away. That's Charlie. You remember his name? Of course I do. She holds the picture out to me. My mom and I made this costume for him. His body is covered in a puffy orange ball, and he's wearing a little green hat with a leaf on it. He looks so much bigger, and not just because he's dressed like a pumpkin. I know, Lester, he's growing so fast. Sometimes he looks bigger when I get home from school than he did in the morning, and he doesn't cry so much either. Mom slides into her chair and grabs the, I'm sorry, that does not say mom. Let me start that sentence over. Mona, haven't heard from her in a while, have we? Let's find out what's going on with Mona. Mona slides into her chair and grabs the picture out of my hand. Who's the pumpkin? It's Charlie, Abby says. Okay, and who's Charlie? Mona asks. How can Mona not know about Charlie? He's my baby brother, Mona. I told you about him lots of times. Mona shrugs. Guess where I went last night? Abby turns away from Mona and stares down at the picture. Come on, Abby, guess. But Abby doesn't guess. She doesn't say anything. I'm going to pause right here. If you want to reach out to me today, I want to hear what you think about my answer, your, your answer to this question. What do you think Abby is thinking right now? Why did Abby not answer Mona? What might be going through Abby's head? What do you think Abby could be realizing right in this moment? Send me that message on Moby Max Messenger. I want to hear from you. Come on, Abby, guess. But Abby doesn't guess. She doesn't say anything. Mona opens a folder from her backpack and pulls out a piece of blue cardboard with a picture of a rainbow colored sparkly, with rainbow colored sparkly wings on it. I finally got my mom to take me to the Halloween store. We bought these for my costume. She holds the picture in front of Abby. Look how perfect they are. Abby turns around. What about the wings I made you? These new ones are way better. Just wait until you see them on me tonight. Mona looks up at me and makes the noise like she's got something stuck in her throat, <coughs> which means she's about to tell me to leave. But this time, before I can go, and before she can say anything, I'm sorry. I'm struggling with the words today. I'm sorry, guys. Let me start over. But this time, I go before she can say anything. I've got a lot more important things to do than listen to her talk about some dumb wings anyway. When I get back to my seat, Connor lifts up my foot again. Do they really make prints in the dirt? they did in my garden last night. I'm totally getting a pair this weekend, Connor says, and holds up his hand like he's about to give me a high five. I hold my hand up too, just in case, and that's exactly what he does. Me too, I'm getting them too, Michael Z says, and he high fives me. Connor and Michael Z both just gave me high fives, and all I did was get these shoes. Just wait until they see me kick in them. All right, guys, that's the end of our chapters for today. We will pick back up tomorrow. Tomorrow's, we will start off with a chapter titled The Kickball Game. Okay, I'll check in with you guys then. Bye, have a great day.